Okay, there we go. Um, uh, due to Governor Lamont's um, uh, edict, uh, this meeting is being recorded uh, for future prosperity. Um, good morning and good afternoon to everybody. How's everybody doing? Good, great. Um, all right, why don't we get, uh, Pete, I don't think we, based on what I'm looking at, it doesn't seem like we have anything to vote on today. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. All right, let's get right into uh, uh, the development project update. So probably the, <clears throat> the freshest thing that you may have seen is the brewery uh, articles, uh, last couple of days news and in print. So uh, we're still waiting for the plans and the application to be submitted. Um, so um, that probably now won't be scheduled until sometime in October. So just to keep you, keep you in the loop uh, on that. Um, the, um, the vacant properties, the nursing home and 1000 Silas Dean Highway have been quiet, I think since our last meeting. Uh, prior to that, we had been talking to a few people, but it seems to have quieted down as it tends to, tends to do. Um, same thing with the, with the 207 Church Street, that's been quiet. Um, they were go, go, go to get in there and get the building renovated, but that seems to have uh, quieted down a little bit. Um, a couple of projects making, you may have noticed um, the bank, at the corner of Mill Street really started starting to shape up uh, pretty, pretty nicely. Uh, making progress there. Uh, Puritan Furniture Building also progressing as well. 1199 Silestine Highway. Uh, they're now working on the front entrance. Uh, so that's also progressing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so those are probably the highlights that I'm just um, in my mind's eye going up and down the corridors. Um, Peter, anything on how the uh, steakhouse is doing on Berlin Turnpike? Continues to, I have spoken with the building inspector about trying to um, somehow push that project along, but um, nothing has uh, really progressed um, recently. So uh, there, there is an, another property on the Berlin Turnpike. It, it's a granite showroom. You may have noticed down there, they've been moving some dirt around. So that's starting to shape up. I know they gave them a foundation permit. Uh, so hopefully that will... Uh, that will start to happen. Um, we have met several times with the developers and representatives for the uh, self-storage property on Arrow Road that that seems to be starting to move uh, forward. It does have to go back through the planning and zoning process because the plans are a little bit different than what we approved, but that seems to be um, a renewed, renewed project. Peter, Peter, when it comes to the um, the the uh, restaurant on the Berlin Turnpike, I mean, at what point do I mean? Is, is I guess they're probably current on their property taxes, but I mean, at what point do you just try to get some sort of sense about what their plan is? Yeah, those are uh, good questions. I mean, I'm I'm more um, you know interested in really getting them to move the project along. Uh, they um, and I have spoken with the building official, it's a delicate balance. As long as they're doing something, he apparently by building code is not uh, permitted to really either pull their permits, which wouldn't be productive, but um, really somehow have a, a penalty or some provision to move, move that uh, progress along. It seems to be, you know, a weekend um, project more than, more than anything else. So I, I, yeah, I really don't, really don't know what to, what to say about that because it yeah it just becomes a little bit suspicious after a while you know if you really don't know what the end game is right yeah he did explain to us at the beginning you know it was american style you know restaurant and uh, but now it literally has got to be three years maybe maybe longer more yeah so I'll, as I say, I'll search. I'll, I'll circle back with the building official and maybe the property maintenance staff and see what we can really do to somehow get that moving.
Uh, Pete, on, on the auction house, I just, I mean, I know, I know the guys at Square uh, Peg were, were ready to, to rock and roll, but if you could just call them and tell them to cut the grass, um, it's about three feet high. In yeah, front of I've had to do that. I've had to do that twice already. So um, I'm not sure why they don't have a contractor for that. I did, I did also reach out to them to see what I could do to help, you know, move their project along. I did not get a response. So, um, but I will, I will, uh, I'll give them a friendly reminder. Uh, and I think Tom brings up a good, you know, a good, you know, scenario with regards to these projects that don't seem to move very quickly. Um, I, I do know that the guy Tom is working on a shoestring budget and literally it's a one man operation in there. There's not a, there's not a team of people going there and working. He literally is doing it. I, and I don't know how he's surviving, but he is, but it's just a, it's a one man show over there. There's not crews of people that are going in. It's one guy kind of working on it. I don't even know if it's full time. So um, let's just hope one, let's hope it becomes a, a functioning restaurant and a member of tax. And I meant to mention as a matter of fact, on the last go round, and, and I really should do this at the beginning. Um, the comments from the group obviously are, are really important to the group. But one of the things that I've been educated on is that if you're not an active member of the EDIC, you have to re uh, hold your comments to, uh, to the end. Um, so I just want to share that with the group um, because I know it's, it's, a, it's an important thing. It's a protocol thing and it's got to be, I've got to do this the right way um, on all the meetings as they're done in other meetings here in town. I just want to put that on the record. Um, anything else on development project updates? Uh, one question about uh, Clearinghouse and we haven't talked about it in a while, but, but what's the status of the steep funds? And is there any sort of thought about sort of redirecting those to some of these projects? Uh, we have, we have um, the funds are still there. They haven't been revoked yet by the uh, state, uh, knock on wood. Uh, we have in several situations, including the clearinghouse property uh, mentioned uh, that there is funding available. And it, if, it, once, if and once they have a plan, that they want to present to us that we could potentially shop that around with the state and get it reprogrammed. No one has yet uh, taken us up on that offer and provided the um, details that we would need to present to the state to spend those funds. So, um, but yes, we have um, tried to offer those to other people. And uh, as I say, we're still waiting for <clears throat> plans for the clearinghouse. Maybe once we get those, we can have a more serious conversation about bringing that um, to the state to see if it could be reprogrammed. Yeah, another good point. I mean, we're concerned about use it or lose it, but it does seem recently that there seems to be funds uh, flowing uh, out, but um, I do have a concern on that, uh, that if we don't use that money, um, I know we were talking with Gary on that at one point, that there was some concern. Is there anything in writing, Peter? We've been given a deadline at all on on that money. We've we've been reminded, I think, on a couple of occasions. I don't think there's been anything uh, recent. I know Gary had received um, an inquiry, um, but I don't. That, it doesn't seem to be uh, pressing, but. I get like the obligatory every other month email from the state saying, hey, you were supposed to give us a plan on the reuse or a status update on closure. Hold on. Oh, that's not kind of nowhere. Um, uh, thank you. The, uh, at the same time, there's a number of things on, there's several grants on that list that have been closed out and their paperwork shows that they haven't been. So, um, you know, we we're in communication with them most often enough where we're showing that, hey, listen, you, you've got to clean up your stuff on our on your side and here's documentation. Obviously they're looking to recapture the full amount if they can, we want to reprogram it. So we've been able to drag it out much longer than I thought, but that's a good thing. Great, thanks Gary. Judy? Um, is there any way that once we get applications for, um, Facade improvements that we could use that money first, um, 
or do we have to be down to the bottom of the barrel before we can access before we can ask the state if we can redirect that money? <clears throat> that money was not uh, earmarked for the facade program. It was earmarked just for 1000 Silas Dean Highway redevelopment. So um, we could ask them to reprogram it to the facade program, but uh, right now it's not uh, eligible. Facade, the other facade projects money. would not be eligible. Okay, but if we could appeal for that, then mm -hmm. I, I see that there's gonna be three or four places that are gonna want facade. I think that the breweries, both of them, will want some facade money. And uh, I, I keep thinking that Charles is gonna ask for some. So, um, you know, I think that that could eat up what we have um, for the facade improvement. So if we could appeal to the state now to direct redirect that to facade improvement since nothing's happening at 1000 Asylum, I mean 1000 um, Silas okay. Dean. Yep. Then if something does come in there, we'll have that, our facade money to go for, uh, through. Yeah. It's a, um, uh, you're applying logic here, Judy, which I like to say, um, which doesn't always work when it comes to what we're what we try to accomplish. But the I think right now, if you go to the state and we say we want to reappropriate that, and then maybe there's something that does come up at Thousand Southstein Highway, and we don't have the money, it's it's kind of a chicken or the egg. Um, I think we need to be mindful of it. We do have funds, and that was going to be one of the questions. I'll just kind of, uh, I'm, Pete, I'm afraid to ask the question because I know we're waiting for the accounting department to let us know exactly what the amount of money we've got um, in the facade improvement program. Do we have that number? I have a number, um, whether it's the um, the number. Um, I think we are now with the uh, additional capital improvement funds up to uh, around about 120,000. So we are in pretty good shape in terms of funding for the facade program. Um, yeah. So. So Judy, we did get, I think, was it 50,000 from CIP? Yes. Um, and and the, the, the books with regards to the facade, we've been waiting to get the right numbers. And obviously that's around 70,000. So we were down to like 15, 20 grand a little while ago before the CIP money and this, um, this um, accounting, um, before we got the accounting. So we're at the 120. But some we need to think about, but I mean, a thousand South Sea Highway is still a, a project that we'd like to be able to have that money available. If we were down to 15 grand, I think I'd take your concept, Judy, and probably push it a little bit stronger because you're right. I think we are, there is going to be a demand uh, for that money um, coming up. And they could, each, they could each ask for $50,000. Absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. And those would be projects, I think, some of them, that we would want to be generous with. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Any other questions on, on development project updates? I just had a question on the comment on the steep. Can those funds be reallocated or if they were earmarked for something and we say we don't need it there, will they just say, well, then we'll take them away? No, they've, they've indicated that if we um, gave them a specific justification with a specific plan, uh, for the use of the funds that it would um, they would consider reprogramming it uh, for something else but it's a you know we got to put in an application justify it with jobs and details make sure it's a real project in their eyes um, and we've been holding off doing that until we had a project with that level of detail uh, as mark said you know we we've, we've offered it to the church street project once they you know, have details, plans, and they can maybe give us an idea of jobs and investment amounts, things like that, then we could certainly. Um, but what I would want to do is obviously get the blessing of this commission. Uh, I don't, we may also need council permission as well. So there would be a process that we, we would need a, a record that, you know, we want to, we want to reprogram those funds um, before we actually do that. So. Okay. So we, we need the projects. Yes. And then reallocate, just don't generically reallocate for future. Okay. Right. Because then we could be in the same boat where there's no project right. and the money's been sitting there and the state's reprogrammed it. And we can't go back to 1,000 right. if something ever happens. So, right. um, okay. yeah, I, I'm just, we're just 
hoping that the state does not want to grab it and use yeah. it for another another community. So um, knock on wood. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Yep. Any other questions on development project updates? Okay. Just one more comment, Mark, on the sure. on the reallocation of the uh, money. I, I do believe that we could give uh, the state a very good um, statement about what past allocations have generated in uh, tourism and uh, income to the town and all that. Because I mean, Lenoche's and all the places that we have done the facade, I think have brought lots of. Uh, we've gotten a great return for those. So that might be one thing. Yeah, it's been a great use of the money. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Any other comments? Okay, guys. Peter, I know the last time when we spoke, and this is my bad, that I, I wanted to get a group together on a business uh, outreach survey meeting and go through those results. I know that you're running a little thin. Um, yep. Do not let me forget to... Uh, schedule that meeting because I did not do that after our last meeting. And again, I take responsibility <clears throat> for that. <clears throat> I'd like to get anybody else interested to sit and go through those comments because again, things could be timely. So please help me re okay. to, re to get that meeting scheduled. Okay, let's um, do, that, do that at the end of the meeting here. Please. Any okay. questions on, on the business outreach survey other than we need to get together and view the results that we have gotten? Okay. Um, our tax incentive program policy update, Pete. I just, once again, ha haven't had the time to, you know, we're at the stage where I need to write the final. Um, I've kind of been holding off to make that a project for the new economic development person, quite frankly. So, um, so I, I really can't, I, nothing to report on that, sorry. Okay, no issues, I get it. Um, just to inform the group, um, we are in the process of interviewing uh, candidates, as you know, uh, we requested uh, from uh, Gary and Gary went to council and we got uh, $50,000 set aside for that uh, individual to help support uh, Peter and his efforts in that department. And we began uh, interviewing uh, and we hope to have um, a decision made within a week or so on filling that position because we definitely need some more hands on deck um, in that area, just to touch base on that. It wasn't on the agenda, but I just want to let you know that we are working on that. Uh, and moving uh, uh, aggressively forward. Um, Salestine Highway, I mean, we've had a conversation, um, as you know, with Gabe uh, and with Cindy uh, at times, uh, and um, we, um, I thought it was interesting today, I don't think I'm talking out of school, um, uh, Ray Carpentino, who was involved with the, with, uh, the town of Rocky Hill, um, uh, was, was part of a panel today that we were uh, using to help interview and we started talking about what was happening in Rocky Hill uh, and they're on phase three of a three phase program. I think it's, that's the last phase. And as you know, they're um, the, at the far end of Southstein Highway before it branches off. I think that's Parsonage or Dividend Road there that began to put in street lights and whatnot. It's a, a beautification uh, concept. And we talked about maybe, um, uh, and we really, we really should turn it from a maybe to a, a, to a do and sitting down and talking to our neighbor in Rocky Hill, Peter actually had suggested that in talking about what we can do collectively uh, to work on that end of the Salestine Highway um, collectively together on potential projects that have come up in the past. So it is something that I think came out of that meeting today, Pete, that I think is kind of timely. Um, but you know what Weathersfield is doing, I'm, excuse me, and I think um, Rocky Hill, Peter, did he say that was Rocky Hill fund or that wasn't Rocky Hill funding? Was that federal funding? Federal. Uh, Federal funding that went through CROG and the Connecticut DOT. Uh, so I think we would be uh, interested in hearing more about that and how they access those funds for, for us to look into too. I know uh, we've been successful getting uh, funding through CROG for, for other transportation projects, but um, the Silestine Highway certainly would be uh, at the top of the list. So I think um, we should definitely follow up on that offer to get a meeting together with Rocky Hill and uh, see how serious they are about some of the things that we're talking about as well. You mentioned TAP as well. Uh, I don't know what that, uh, was it transportation? What, what, what was TAP? Yeah, trans transportation assistance program okay. or something like that. All these 
pots of money have these, you know, strange ac acronyms, but um, ultimately it came from the federal government. So um, <clears throat> something we should certainly uh, follow up on. Okay. Yeah, and also their, their streetlight program, that comes from the state and that was $4 million. And from, I think what you told us or uh, a couple of months ago, you said that's part of a regular maintenance project by DOT that they're replacing signals. And they said that Rocky Hill signals were older than ours. I found that a little bit odd, but, um, but if that's the case, it would be nice to know when, when our portion of the silo steam might be due for a signal replacement project, especially we have more state roads in Weathersfield than they do in Rocky Hill. And I think it covers something like 19 intersections or 19, 19 different streetlights throughout that town. So it would be helpful to know from DOT as to what their schedule might be for, for, uh, for Weathersfield. Got it. Um, any other questions regarding Southstein Highway? Um, Pat, I don't know if you're still on the horn uh, here uh, or if you had to exit. Did Pat, did Pat have to exit? Because I was going to try to get in before 1230. Maybe he's going to dial back he's in. He's still there. He's still there. Pat, would you like to uh, give me your, your update? That way we can yeah. get you. Uh... Yeah, I got like a 30 minute drive. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll obviously just reconnect. So just make sure to let me back in. But just wanted to give sort of a, a brief update um, from a count's perspective. Knock on wood, it's been relatively quiet. Um, the police chief search, um, we've narrowed it down to the final five. Um, and that the final interview process should be around. I think it's the consultant, uh, I'll, Gary could probably uh, clarify this, but I think it's September 21st to 24th. It's a, it's a two day interview and I think they're a lot of those days. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, Gary, but uh, just kind of a side note to all the development projects. It is kind of, it is the, it, it, it's, at, it's amazing to see uh, just even for me, people uh, reaching out uh, to me, asking for contacts of people who want to come into the town um, as far as now Avon and Massachusetts, they're, they're looking to invest. And I think a lot of that has to do with uh, some of the development that's going on in Hartford. They think it's going to sort of trickle out into the suburban towns, which I tend to agree with. Um, I, th that's kind of like a brief update. I did have a request um, and a question. So my question first to maybe Gary and Peter, is there any more update as far as the, um, the, the, the parking situation, you know, based on the, um, the little forum that we had, uh, any, any updates as far as uh, some of the stuff that came out of the bonding commission? That's the question. Then uh, the request would be more uh, for Peter, uh, if you could uh, potentially come to the next council meeting, which I think the 13th was canceled for the mayor's charity ball. Uh, so the next one would be the 20th. Would you be able to come and um, potentially discuss some of these development updates, share with council? And if you do have time, uh, maybe just uh, share with some of the developments that you have in the tax incentive policy. Sure. Um, I, I think I was planning on being there uh, anyway for a couple of other things. So I can okay. certainly, uh, yeah, if uh, I'll work with Gary to to get to get that on the agenda. Okay. Yeah, and in, in terms of the up in yeah. Pete, you can jump in or correct me if I'm wrong from the parking. We've got a lot of we got a lot of data, uh, a lot of requests and a lot of information from people. We haven't had a chance to sit and kind of pull it all together um, tightly. Peter and I were just actually talking about that. I was out uh, Tuesday for the holiday. We were closed on Monday and Peter and I caught up yesterday about how we wanted to approach kind of putting the pieces to, of the puzzle together. Um, we have the funding from the state um, that we can use. We had a preliminary plan in place and we have a mixed interest by residents. Some don't want anything going on. Others want a lot going on. So we're gonna try to find the sweet spot and balance from, uh, from, from the feedback that we got. It's a, it's a, it's a really- I was gonna say, that was the interesting part of that forum. Yeah. is just the total, you know, the, the, it was just, it was unbelievable. Some people wanted more stuff and then some people are like, shut it all down. So, um, I honestly, I'm, I'm willing to kind of roll up my sleeves and work on it, but it, it, hopefully we can make as many people happy as we can with some sort of compromise. I, yeah, I agree. And, and thank you for be will, being willing to, uh, to roll up your sleeves on that one. Cause it's certainly, you might want to put on a coat of armor for some, but, um, 
but no, I, I, I mean, I see it as a good thing too. I think we just need to see if there's some, if there is some kind of balance. It, it seemed to me that there were people who are, who are long-term stakeholders in the area who, who like it a certain way. And I respect that. So we need to figure out how to make it um, so that everybody gets some kind of success story here. Question, Gary. Um, I was, I was down at, at Porch Fest, which was just a ridiculously great event. Um, I, that, that just like blew me away. Um, the part, who has the parking authority? I think I know, but I'm just trying to make sure I know it. Who has the ultimate authority over parking and no parking and restrictions, et cetera, on streets? Is it, is it the police department exclusively or is it what? Peter, correct me if I'm wrong, but until September 30th, I think it's ultimately me with advice. Well, it depends upon where it is. Um, but, but ultimately it's the legal traffic authority, which right now by designation is me, but I don't make decisions without police, engineering, planning, fire, I'm trying to think who else is in my little group. Um, so it's, it's not done in a vacuum, but ultimately I have to sign off or not. Yeah. I was just, I was curious about, cause I know normally like for parades and stuff to, you know, the no parking signs go up and it's pretty obvious what that's for. But I was curious, like, and again, I hadn't noticed it until I happened to be down there when there was a lot of traffic. It, with the Charles parking, for example, all those signs that say no parking on the side streets, is that sort of a, a courtesy and a, um, like an understanding type thing, or is it actually an enforceable thing? If you're, if you're talking about the signs, I think you're talking about that is Bryce trying to be a good neighbor and okay. trying to encourage people to get off the road and park in the fire department or in the Keeney. That's, uh, that's being done all by Bryce, all by the, the business owner. And I give him a lot of credit for it because I'm sure he could probably be isolating some potential clients uh, who are coming, but he's, he understands what it needs. What, he's trying to be a good neighbor. Okay. Yeah. I just, I, just, I just thought it was a novel idea and everything. When I saw the signs, I'm sitting there thinking, Hey, you know, good business owner doing that? Could other business owners do that? What's the regulatory environment? So yeah, not, not raising it as an issue. I was just more of a trying to learn more as we go forward, thinking about parking. Hey, Gary. Gary, I will be happy to work on that with you as well, if you want. Um, this is like the fourth time in the amount of time that I've lived in Old Weathersfield <clears throat> that we've gone through parking problems. And I think that the sweet spot will be perfect. If there are places for people to park legally and without infringing on neighbors, then I think that people who don't want the businesses will be satisfied. But um, right now, uh, you know, Bryce is sitting on 13 parking places there. If he just moved his tent, that would increase the parking places in town. So um, I think we have to approach everybody with the same, you know, what can you do to free up parking spaces? If only it was that easy. Yeah, well, I, and I know that they're enlarging the, the lot behind the fire station, so that will add. And uh, I think it's going to be a nightmare when we get the brewery, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> you mean down the other end? Yeah, right. Hey, Gary, you were just talking about those parking signs. Um, that were put up, what is that, um, Center Street. Those are enforceable though, right? Then the police department, you have to sign off on putting up those signs? It, again, depending upon which sign, I don't know if they were, were they the stakes or were the they actually the signs was showing parking? Yeah, there's actually along the street, it's like uh, they put up signs, no parking on this side of the street or whatever it is, you know? And I know it was done to appease the neighbors. I just didn't know, to put up a sign in town or to put it, you have to have, Basically, you have to have the police achieve. You have to have it has to be go through. It's a it's a state yeah, process. Does, but do they say no parking, or do they say be considerate of our neighbors and no, there's, there's parking? There's available. no parking signs. Right, yeah, I'll last take time there was no parking signs. Yeah. Yeah, the no parking ones might be us. I'll I'll take a ride down and look. The no parking ones are closest to the intersection with Main Street, and those are enforced. You, um, okay. you mean the regular and then, signs? And then, the, and, the then Bryce, metal pole. and then Bryce has put lawn signs up. So there's right. two different all Bryce's sign. That's what I was a little confused when they said it because yeah. you know it yeah. is crazy down there. And it is even for all of us to go down and try to park. You know, it's it's not easy. But like you said, you go to the Keeney, it's how many steps is it? You know, we just I guess we gotta try to come up with some sort of a campaign that, you know, come down here and you could park here, you could park here. 
just to get it out there uh, instead of people getting tickets. And people, we have one lady that calls the mayor every day about parking at the Charles because she, she just doesn't like it. So um, it's crazy. We, we, we love to have businesses like that. And I'd love to keep seeing business like that. But we all have to come together and understand to have business like that. We all have to compromise a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah. The, the, uh, those, the, the newer signs that were put out were, were signed through over here uh, because there were issues. Those are enforceable. I thought you were talking about like stakes that were put in the ground. No, no, further I, down. Yeah. 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 I, I put those up all around my neighborhood and I give out tickets to everybody. No. <laughs> I believe that actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it, it, it does take a village in this particular case. You're right. You know, you've got to be considerate of the neighborhood, but also uh, supporting that business or any kind of business development in town is what drives, drives the development. Um, so hopefully, you know, the plan that, and again, it was just a preliminary plan, but what we put in place adds 77 parking spots to that side of town, to that side of old Weathersfield. That's a huge increase to, uh, for parking and addresses parking. And then it's a conversation down the other end of the street, um, which uh, just got to get on paper. Um, I, know, I'm not going to say who it is, but he's part of this uh, this committee. He has a great parking space, and you walk through his backyard and you come right out of Keeney Cultural Center. I do it that way all the time because then I can stop at a bar, get a drink first. And I'm not going to say it doesn't sound like uh, Trahan or anything like that. It's just, you know, sort of like that. But. Um, is Trahan, your Trahan. Is your mute button working, Tom? <laughs> My what? Your mute button. Um, no. I like I like the Trahan pronunciation. I like that. Didn't yeah, Trahan, Trahan Trahan just get through? Uh, just didn't he just get released? Sirhan, <laughs> Sirhan. Yeah. Um, can I make one last statement? Um, you know, years of well, King Foundation. We do have to get permission. I think it's from the town council. Uh, to put up signs for the carnival or for anything. And uh, it's because we have a signage rule in town that you can't have signs up without permission and that it's litter to have 85 signs across the road. So in some cases, maybe those signs help, but in other cases, they're just ugly looking at all these signs up the street that nobody's paying attention to anyway. Well, the good news is I remember sitting on this council 10 years ago and people wonder, uh, how do we get more people to visit um, uh, Old Weathersfield? So mission accomplished. So that's the good news. We got too many customers. So this is a wonderful problem, my perspective to have. Um, any other questions regarding this? We got off the track a little bit here. Um, Leslie, are you waving at us? I just wanted to ask, I remember some time ago, we talked about putting some new parking signs to direct people to the Keeney and lower, was all that done? Were all those new signs installed to direct people to the Keeney parking lot? So the one thing that had happened was the, the there's a large tree uh, on the side of the Keeney and the branch had actually grown out to block the parking sign. Um, so we had the tree warden go out there, I don't know, a week or two ago and uh, trim that back so that when you're coming, when you're heading north, on Main Street, you can see the parking sign uh, to get you into the to the back of uh, the Keeney. Uh, we had talked about um, wayfinding signage throughout Old Weathersfield as part of that program, uh, which is still, uh, which will likely be something the economic new economic development person works on. Some of that has some parking signage factored into it. There are two signs directing people to the Keeney Center. We actually talked about adding some signage for the fire department. So that would probably be the next thing that we right. do is um, at least get something. But we've got to also work with the fire department staff as well on that. So uh, Peter, thank can you. you. Yeah. Can you remind me if as part of the, uh, the old Weathersfield um, bike pedestrian improvement um, projects, Yep. If if a side is, is are we doing a sidewalk at the Keeney Center? No, that, that goes into the parking in, lot. That was identified in the parking study as a recommendation. Uh, right now, that is not a funded project, um, but it needs to somehow get on a list and get funded. Because I was I was down there the other night, coming out of the Keeney parking lot, and 
you know, three different groups of people who are either coming or going and walking down the driveway. And yeah. it's always, it's challenging enough to get out of that once you get to Main Street, not having to worry about people walking in the middle of the travel lane. So um, yeah, that is a project um, that needs to be identified somewhere and get some funding. Yeah, that's a real safety issue. The, yes, more, it is. the more we're telling people to park there, the fact that you have to make them walk in a driveway to get out is a bad thing. Yes. Can I, um, this is, it could be an outrageously stupid thing for me to say, but I'm famous for those uh, at times. Um, is, is there any, um, is there, you know, when you go, if you're in Broadway, you hop on those cycles and it'll take you, uh, you know, the little, the, the, those um, rickshaws uh, type of thing. Is there any way that we could get a, you know, a, um, a entrepreneurial couple of kids to shuffle people from the Keeney parking lot over to the Charles or whatnot, or is that an issue from an insurance perspective? You know, that could be a busy area. You know, I, I worry about that, but you know, if, if getting people, if you're elderly and, uh, or it's really inclement, um, that becomes issues. The, the five, the additional 77 spots, if that gets done, this solves almost all the problems, but I'm just wondering, Pete, is that, uh, or Gary, is that something that the town could look into? Well, you know, I, I but because I would worry about the safety aspect of it, or is that, like I said, outrageously stupid? I, I, I know, I actually know a guy who has one, so I would maybe talk to him and see what he thinks about it. But yeah, I think there's certainly liability issues, but I think, you know, the, in comparison to the idea of a shuttle bus, it makes a lot more sense uh, and is more practical. Um, but you would probably need a, you know, three or four of them to really have an impact rather than just one guy, you know, going back and forth. But I, I think it's probably an idea worth you know, running up the flagpole or having, uh, you know, the merchants, you know, sponsor it. It's also a cool thing that people might even right. get more visitors to it. So um, I, I don't think it's that crazy an idea, but there's probably a lot of logistics uh, to work out. Um, but, you know, not, not so crazy in my mind. I think you could even use like golf carts or something. I see those down at the shore all the time and they have like the limo size that you can carry up to, you know, six people. Mm. So. Plus they now have all these electric bikes, you know, rather than some poor guy having to pedal them all around, you could set it up with a rickshaw with the electric bike maybe and, you know, even make more sense, but it's probably something worth, uh, worth looking into as, uh, um, and not just, for the Charles, but for the brewery guy as well. Yeah. So, so. I, I have a question on that. What What do you think on that? I think it's a great idea. Um, what would be the optimum hours, do you think, and days? Probably We're gonna, five to 10. I'm sorry, five to 10? I would say 5 p.m. to 10, unless, you know, but if you expanded the idea, you took people down to the heirloom market and anything else, and it was a bit of a circuit and you hopped down for two bucks or, or whatever, yeah. just made a circuit, you know, there, it could be something, but the hours, I think that depending upon the interest on the business community could be, yeah. could be, you know, longer than, you know, a, a five to yeah. 10 hour window. But right. yeah, as a starting point, that's great. And you think seven days a week or if, if it could be, you know, if it could, the issues always boil down to money, you know, if it's something that could yeah. be where the, you know, the, the, the share of stakeholders and, in that area could kick in for it, or you could put advertising on it and pay it with advertising, or, you know, you get a private company to come in that does this for a living. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess there's a lot of different yeah. ideas. Maybe it's something that we should kick around a little bit more. Yeah. Thank you. I love that crazy idea. So it's outrageous, but not too stupid. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Ted. <laughs> um, any other questions? Uh, we're going to get over to American uh, Recovery Act's uh, program and funding. Um, I, I'd like to start, this is really the one I wanted to get to. We have, you know, a significant amount of funding available, but I still am, for one, am, and maybe I'm the only one, still not specifically clear on how we can use that funds. I've seen stuff, and I'm sure Tom Carson has done a um, significant amount of research on this. I'm shocked if you haven't, Tom. But what other towns uh, are using the funds for, and it, some of them look a little, some of them look like they make sense based on how the it was 
uh, the, the ARPA uh, funding was written, the bylaws, if you will, and some of it looks like a real stretch at best. Where are we on, on the use of those funds? Is there a time frame on using those funds? Again, is it, is it a use it or lose it type of thing? And where are we at at, that, at this point, Gary or Pete, on you know, what the town's position is on what we can use that money for? Mr. Manager, I defer to you. Yeah, I can't remember who I did, the if it was for this group or the council, I did a, a kind of a little uh, breakdown and outline. Um, essentially, we've got three years to uh, spend. I actually have asked the federal government for a, a definition of is it spend or commit because some programming some programs the funds need to be committed by others say that they have to be spent by um, and I've also asked them a question about whether or not we can create revolving a revolving program which seems like we can um, and a number of communities have done something similar um, we have a kind of a structured outline um, to follow frankly I'd, I'd like to sit down with Peter and Mark and kind of hash it out it's one of the things on my hit list before um, before the end of September to go over, um, which means, you know, probably something in October to tighten it up um, with this group first. Uh, and that is really part of the conversation too, is the who, what, and when. Um, my opinion or what I kind of lean towards is the we come up with that general outline, we tighten it up and our first stop in the path for approval is EDIC RDA. Um, my opinion is again, that should rest within the EDIC RDA to figure out, um, to kind of be part of the um, approval process, the first step. That's just my opinion uh, for what it's worth, but I do think other committees and commissions need to play a role at some level and whether or not that's creating a hybrid for approval or a process for approval, but obviously these funds can be used to make major impact to um, the economic stability of this town, not just one time, but for future and, and, and repeating forward. And it really will take approval from the planning and zoning, or if anything gets done at the historic and old Weathersfield, then it's a historic district and ultimately resting on the council's um, shoulders uh, for approval. What I've been saying all along is, while it sounds like a lot of money, it's not. Uh, for a development purpose and to get a large return on it, on investment, you have to put a large investment in, or you have to use that funding to leverage a large investment, which could still result in being a large investment. So uh, I guess what I'd like to submit to the group um, is, you know, Mark and Peter, if we could just kind of finalize offline in the next couple of weeks, the thought process, and then October um, maybe start hashing it out at the EDIC RDA level. That might be a, a good idea. We're, the, the clock is ticking, although I'm not overly concerned just speaking to other partners um, out there in the state who are wrestling with how to use it. It's easy enough to come up with a general plan. This is how we're going to use it, and these are the finer points. It's a much harder um, issue to execute um, correctly and adequately. So, you know, we can come up with a relatively grandiose plan and we're going to use it in these categories and this is the type of development. And when you look at the plans, so the, uh, the larger municipalities had to come up with a plan that they had to submit to the state uh, federal government, I want to say September, maybe mid-September um, or September 30th. We don't have to because of our size and the dollar amount that we're getting. But when you look at most of them have taken existing five-year CDBG plans and, and uh, existing economic development strategies, and they basically just put this money within those buckets, um, which is why you see such these unique differences with how like an East Hartford might use it versus a Stamford, um, who else was kind of funky, um, because they're using other funding and they're just adding this to the pot and they'll find ways to fit it into those gaps. Um, in their existing funding sources that they can't use, where we don't we don't have that, you know, other than a program for facade improvement, it's not like we have property maintenance program, uh, um, you know, a large economic development incentive program for multi million dollar projects. So we're we're our approach is a little different than surrounding communities, my opinion. Great, that's exactly what I'm looking for, Gary. And like you said, we can get online and begin to just get that conversation going um, because 
it's wonderful to have, I mean, EDIC and RDA, we've been cash starved um, and we, we, we have no excuses now um, uh, because there's significant funding here and just zoning down on where we can actually use that um, uh, is, is, is great. Again, it's a great problem to have. Um, is yeah. how, how can we spend money? Um, Councillor Martino? Uh, not councillor anymore, just a member. Oh. Uh, Gary, right. just uh, how much money are we supposed to be getting out of that program? I think we're all total worth 7 million, not including what the Board of Ed got. Oh, great. And keep in mind, that's not, we're probably not going to be able to, you know, again, ultimately council has has a decision that they have to make. Um, but just from a budgeting standpoint, and I can't say, hey, we're going to get all 7 million is just going to go for economic development. There will be carve outs. My suspicion there'll be carve outs for just government operations as well. That's a, that's allowable staffing and, and existing um, uh, government operations. Yeah, but knowing that it's, you know, in the millions and not hundreds of thousands makes it Correct. easier to come up with projects. That's why I was asking. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah, if we, if we do this right, you'll you'll see a, a you know, an opportunity for, for value coming back um, within to the organization, within, you know, from, just from a taxable revenue standpoint. And Tony, you're counselor for life for me in my head. So <laughs> I'm, it's a term of endearment, sir. Um, no problem. Thank you. My pleasure. Um, so uh, any other questions on the American Recovery Act program? So that is one of our meetings that we'll schedule. Uh, I've got three or four meetings we've got to get to then by the end. Um, I already alluded to item B under new business, part-time economic development coordinator. Uh, as I mentioned, we are in the process of interviewing. We have one more interview this afternoon. Uh, we have some very unique candidates um, uh, and um, we hope again to have um, some more feet on, on the street and the economic development department, hopefully um, make an offer within a week or so. That's the game plan. Um, best laid plans of mice and men, but that is uh, what we're uh, working on and working towards. Um, salute to business 2021. Um, I remember our salute to business conversation for 2020, um, uh, which we didn't have. And I have concerns about what we can do this year. What are, what is the group thoughts with regard to this, Pete? And, you know, I know the, um, we're not at a, re a true restrictive phase yet. Be interesting to get Judy's position on this. This is her uh, specialty uh, as an infectious nurse. Um, what are our thoughts on, on this event this year? I don't think we can count on uh, being free and clear by December. Um, I think people are still going to be nervous about gathering. Um, I do have one suggestion, though, and I think I suggested it last year, and that's the drive-in model. Now, I, I don't know if River has actually gotten their screens up, but um, if we could get people to go to River and park their cars and, you know, I think that that could be a, a unique and fun experience and we can still honor the recipients. Any other, thank you, Judy. Any other thoughts on this? Leslie? Um, I wanted to ask about doing it a little bit earlier and do it under the tent at the Charles. And just keep it, you know, a smaller crowd. Okay. Other ideas, concepts, thoughts? Um, one thing I'm doing with another group is we're having a small ceremony with the recipients live and then live streaming it so everyone else can watch and support. So I don't know if we can, I don't, you know, it's gonna depend obviously when we do it and how many people we're talking about, but that might be an option. Um, we I could think also, this, we, go ahead, I'm, I'm sorry. No, Mark, I was just gonna say, I love the idea of doing it to Charles, but then we could also do it one of the town properties. We could do it with a tent behind Old Weathersfield where we're just talking about parking or something like that, have somebody cater it um, so that we're not taking up space in a restaurant. I don't know, just save money. I just thought we can, and do it earlier, like like it was said, so we can get it over with, get, you know, really salute the business because they still need the help and we all want to help. That's why we're here, so. 
So the idea, guys, is it's outside, so it's less risk. Is that the mm -hmm. issue? Okay. You get more people at, to come. I was okay. at an event, uh, uh, event last night where people were honored, and uh, they had everybody outside for cocktails first or uh, cheese and crackers and things like that. And then that was it. And then everybody went inside with masks on to sit in classroom style seating, you know, rows of seats to um, hear the presentations and uh, honor the recipients of the awards. Well, I'm, I'm gonna speak on behalf of, of, of Pete's department. At this point, we would already probably be identifying mm -hmm. um, who the um, uh, potential awardees would be. Um, and as you know, there's a significant amount of, of planning just on using the, the country club, which is, you know, if we're, it's, that's their environment. They're used to giving us the numbers. So there's a menu. I think what we're talking about here is, you know, renting a tent, developing a menu ourselves, an itinerary, et cetera. If this group, and I say this with all sincerity, is serious about this, this is going to require an all hands on deck commitment from virtually everybody uh, that we have um, on this, involved with this, with the EDIC and the RDA. Uh, because it would be a big undertaking and something that if we are serious about it, we really would have to get started now if we wanted to do this while while the weather still was moderately cooperative. So, um, you know, I put that out to the group. So I want you guys to do some real soul searching. I don't want to talk about this a month from now and bring this up on the item and we're still scratching our heads because if, if this is something that we want to do in October or November, um, it would, it really would require, you know, some really good teamwork to get this thing going. Um, uh, and I think this falls squarely into that um, item on hiring somebody for Pete's department um, to be able to maybe work on something like this. So all these ideas are great. I think we could probably pull it off, but I would be leaning on everybody um, who looks like the Brady Bunch here on the screen um, to, you know, to, to participate one way or another to pull something like this off. That's all I'll say about that. Um, um, if we want, that can be another meeting that we can discuss or we can discuss it further now. I certainly have got, I do have some time. What are your thoughts on this? You know, how committed is this group to doing that this year um, and putting that itinerary together? And, and Peter, let me go to you first. I mean, from a staffing perspective, even if you had some support, is this something from a timely, from a time perspective you think we could potentially pull off? You're pulling a Mark Trahan. I believe it's pronounced Trahan. I, I pulled the oh. Trahan. That's, from, from this point forward, it's Trahan. Sorry, Mark. But um, if there's a will, there's a way. I mean, we, we can, you know, it, it, other town departments have experience with events. And so we could, we could share the load and I'm, I'm sure we could, we could figure it out. It's just a matter of coming up with a plan and then putting all hands on deck to, to implement it. So I would like to do something, even if it's, you know, going back to the old days and a much smaller venue and, and just recognize, you know, the accomplishments over the, I would, I would also go back a year and include people we were going to recognize last year. I don't want to miss them. So, um, but certainly I think we could do something. It's just a matter of sitting down and figuring out what that is and when we want to do it and how we want to do it. So um, I'm game to do it rather than push it out another year and then we're rolling the dice again. So uh, if there's a way of doing it, uh, if we're going to do a tent, we probably have to do it way earlier than we would think because of the temperatures and you know those kinds of things. So if we're going to do inside, then that gives us more flexibility. So um, those are my, my, at least my initial thoughts on that. Yeah, and all balancing this around the whole uh, COVID thing as well. So it's gonna take some thought. Um, uh, I'm gonna make a note on this with regards to a handful of the other meetings here, but um, before um, you'll get an email or something from us with regards to maybe forming a, a committee and talking about what the concept could be, but again, this, we would need to pull the trigger within a, a week or two mm -hmm. on this in order to get make this thing feasible if, if we're going to do the concept of a tent, uh, et cetera, which is one of the concepts. Um, you know, so if, 
if it was to be at uh, the Charles, uh, his tent is really fairly small, but Keene Foundation has the big tent. Mark, if we put that over the lawn, um, many more people could sit outside um, under the big tent. The only issue there is that our tents are not designed to go into uh, cement. We'd have to, they're designed to go into the poles and be supported on, you know. Yeah, the, no, 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 no. I mean, on his lawn, just like oh, we on the lawn. call it oh, on see. his lawn. Yeah. Okay. So that more people and have an extra uh, uh, box out there so people could hear okay. what was being yeah. said in the other tent. Yeah, <clears throat> that makes sense. Um, I just wanted to add that, uh, you know, I'm on the mayor's charity ball and originally our event on Monday was supposed to be inside and outside accommodating at the Charles accommodating 150 people and the feedback we were getting from the public was they didn't want to be inside because yeah. of COVID. Yeah. Right. So it's mainly outside now with, uh, with the lawn, because we, we only are using his tent, but you know, it's going to be 90 to 100 people. So as it gets worse, I'm just throwing out there that I think people are very leery to be in a closed group like that in, indoors. Council yeah, Martin, I don't think people are ready to be indoors now with the numbers going up and down, up and down all over the place. Um, yeah. But uh, as I say, we could do two tents um, at yeah. the Charles, which would be a little bit better. Um, That'll hold about a hundred people with the both tents, according to well, what has been our attendance prior to this, like at the country club, Pete, we only yeah. had about 90 people, right? No, we've had as many as 140. Yeah. Okay. So it last few times have been a little less. Yeah. yeah. Or, or maybe we have to limit the attendance because of this, you know, the, these times, you know, demand some, the other thought that while we we're talking about tents is the river restaurant has that tent along the riverbank. They've got the food service right there. I don't know how many people the tent can accommodate. And I, obviously I don't know what the availability of the tent is, but that might be, you know, we can get a price for that. They got plenty of parking. Um, it's supporting a local business. He would probably get one of the awards anyway. So he, he'd have a short commute. Um, <laughs> The other that. thing is people could be seated on the decks above the tent. Right. If we did it um, early enough. Pick a, night, pick a day that they're closed for other things. Spread it out well, a tequila, little bit. Tequila Rio has their outdoor seating there now. And he's got uh, the new. But how many? There's, how probably, many seats? there's probably 75 yeah. seats at Tequila Rio outside. That's a, that's a very interesting uh, holds, idea. I'm sorry, the Tom. Holds up to, the balcony holds up to 100. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's a and very big tent. <laughs> and you know, I, I think I don't think we would have a sit down, at least my my gut would be we wouldn't have a sit down um, dinner at yeah. this. That would be like heavy hors d'oeuvres and yeah. you know, cocktail hour, heavy hors d'oeuvres, and maybe kind of a kind of stand-up setting right. where with, with the high top tables and maybe some seating for people who might need it. But um, we we got 140 people seated at the country club. We right. could easily, if it was a stand-up event or mostly stand-up event without tables, we easily could, you know, use a smaller spot. Um, um, we remember, if it if it rains, though, you're you've got to fit everybody under the tent. I think using the the pat the decks the uh, above that would be good too. Yeah, um, they have the heat there too. Hey, can you exactly. find out? They have heat. Right. Hey, can we find out from them what their outdoor capacity is? between sure. the tent and the, um, the covered tin roof uh, area? Mark, I, I have a, a meeting with her tomorrow on the phone if you want me to help out and ask those questions. Sure, yeah. or, just, or just tell her we're interested and have her give me a call and we can look at the calendar and- Yeah, just to take something off your plate. Yeah, that'd be, that would be great. Okay. Mark, if you do have to go a little later, you know, to when it gets a little colder, even with tents, uh, a lot of places have those propane uh, heaters for outside that would keep the thing warm. You put them around the outside of the tents, yep. you know, and you can keep people warm on the inside with them. Yeah. And you might have some yes. chamber members that have some that could, you know, donate them for the day. I know like the Sopos has them when they have long lines during the winter that they put outside and stuff to keep people yeah. warm while they're waiting to get in. You just can't put flaps down on the tent. So no, that no. makes it an yeah. indoor space. Right. 
So let's, uh, Deb, that'd be great. So one is how many uh, people fit into the tent down by the river, which is pretty. Um, and then in the, the, I think the one that solves all the rain issues and warmth issues would be under the covered area outside in their, um, you know, the patio. But Tom, what did you say? Did you say, how many? Tom Penelo? What's that, Mark? How many seats? I think they hold people? up to 100 people underneath. That's okay, what that's they advertise it. because they have three three levels and right. all the tables that line up. I think it holds up to a hundred up there. And if they, you know, if we were standing around and you had the tent and you had that area with the heat, so people wanted to stay away. I, mean, I love the Charles. I love that place too. But I, you know, that was a great idea with the tent and the heat uh, for some of the people. You know. Okay. And and getting out right now is so important to tell these businesses that we care. They've been you know, all hurting. So I, I do believe that if we could get this done in the next month, we're talking maybe uh, October 15th, something there. And like we said, if we pick a night for either one of those restaurants that uh, are, are less likely to be busy, I love the idea down the river because of the parking. You know, we just talked about parking at the, at the Charles. It's going to be a nightmare, you know, for 140 people. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, we do want to salute the business. We do want to say stuff, but um, I'm with you on that for sure. I, and I'll gladly, Deb, I'll help you. Uh, and Pete, you can pull right out. I mean, I helped you last time with the country club. I have no problem taking the reins and, and going with it. And just let's just get it done instead of talking about it. These meetings, I'll, I'll go out today and do it if we have to. But if Deb has a meeting, uh, you know, with her, I think that's great. Yeah. Deb, what time is your meeting tomorrow? Um, hang on one second. It's it's on the it's just a Zoom um, tomorrow, ten thirty. Do me a favor and send, if it's okay, I don't want to interject on your meeting, but if you want to send an invite out sure. to, if it were, if it's okay with you and, and Martha. And, it was and Martha. Martha. Yeah, yeah, I know she's a great person. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, no Martha will too. Yeah, okay. uh, maybe just send out to the group. Um, might be, a, a, a maybe the be get this ball rolling, uh, so to speak. Can I make a suggestion that we, um, how do we do the, um candidates do we have to submit does everybody uh, have to just submit names or uh does that come from peter and mark or how does that happen usually denise and i start with the list and then you guys go through them because i think that list needs to come out next week yes it does if we're going to do this yeah, you're right it's got to be yeah. done tomorrow yesterday so yep so if you can get the list to everybody and we can kind of yay or nay on it and uh so we can notify people right away and uh, if we are really serious about doing it someplace somehow mm -hmm. uh, you know you bring up another point you know if you if just because we build it we need to make sure people come and you know it's it is a, it is a absolute juggling cats issue on getting the people who are the awardees to respond and say they're coming and how many people are coming. It's a bit of a, um, it's an issue. So we really need to give, if we're gonna do this, we gotta get those the potential awardees, the notification really quickly as well. Okay. okay. Mark, can I make one more suggestion? If, if, we, if we have to keep it smaller, or I, I don't know, doesn't matter on size, but you know, uh, the chamber last year for our best of did videos of, the awardees, and then we posted it on social media. So, I mean, one of our one of our chamber members does that. He take he's a professional photographer, and maybe we could do that and post it on, you know, the the chamber site, the the town site, you know, recognizing these businesses again, again, just showing our our support for them. Yep. So I I'll check that out with him if there's a fee. I'll check that out too. Great. The videos might be nice even to present that night. If, even if we do gather, if we do do it someplace, they would be they would be great to just have looped and keep showing. Yeah, that's a good. All right, good. Well, um, there's a tip of the spear here, so that's good. Um, so Deb, if you want to send that uh, that link out so we can crash your party, um, that'd be great. Um, okay. Mr. Manager, your report, sir. Nothing new going on. All things are quiet. 
I guess I'll give some stuff. Um, so we'll start with um, COVID. So I used to have my COVID meetings on Thursday with my EOC staff in the health department. At um, We used to have them at usually 11 o'clock. Um, unfortunately, we've now moved it to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, so I don't have the most recent numbers um, the governor will put out this afternoon. Um, but I will tell you, last week... It's very quirky the way this works. Um, we went from red to orange, which is good, but we actually went up in the positivity rate. And a lot of that is because we went from a yellow designation a couple of weeks back, maybe a month ago at this point. And then all of a sudden we had 50 new cases in a week. So that jumped us from yellow, we skipped orange and went white right to red. So my guess is we just had an influx of people who either got back from vacation and got tested or for whatever reason they decided to get tested. So we just got uh, inundated with, um, with positive COVID cases. And so that jumped our number up. So last week we had 25. The week before we had 23. The week before that we had 50. And the week before that, I want to say 13. So when you do the math, it basically on a rolling average, it dropped us just under red. Um, I don't know where we're going to be today. My hope is that we've leveled off and maybe orange is the number. Um, I will say for the last three weeks, we've seen the number come down. Um, but again, I think that's because we went up so quickly. Um, it was, um, I, I think the number just kind of leveled off for us, but we'll see. Um, I did put a mask. Yep. Uh, um, I don't know if it's an appropriate question, not just put me on mute, but um, those cases that are, I know four people right now who have got COVID last week, but my question is, do we have data on if they are unvaccinated cases coming through or do we have that data? I don't have it necessarily broken down by town, but I do have, um, but, the, but there is a, the, the number that you're seeing in Connecticut right now is 70% of those being uh, testing positive are unvaccinated, 30% are vaccinated. So you do have more than 25% of the number are those people who are in fact vaccinated. And I keep reminding people the vaccine is not a cure, it just reduces the symptoms or potentially, you know, I'd say, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I would say you're basically asymptomatic. You could be walking around with symptoms and spreading it. Again, not a medical professional, but ultimately, if you have it in you, um, you could pass the viral load, is my opinion. My opinion. My opinion. Um, so ultimately, with the kids going back to school, um, and because of the fact that you could have so many people who are vaccinated, and we, Weathersfield's done great. We have a high vaccination rate um, within all age brackets. Um, you know, I, I don't know where we are compared to other municipalities as a whole, but I'd say we're greater than most. Um, and uh, especially in the age bracket 65 and above. Um, and again, I'll have all those numbers updated for you in about five hours, uh, four or five hours. But um, up until last week, we were, we were high. We're almost 90% vaccination rate at 65 and above. Um, and the others were high 70s, low 80s, with the exception of 12 to age 12 to 17, we were around 58 to 60 percent of that population. Um, so, you know, part of the thought process is our numbers are still high and still elevated. We want to keep the accelerator on this to try to get us back into the yellow so we can, in my opinion, it's all about the economy. Let's try to keep the economy going. We don't want to shut it down again. We want businesses to stay open. I know it's miserable. I don't like putting on the mask either, but it's not the end of the world. And frankly, if I can keep businesses up and running, to me, that's, that's and this is me probably weighing in more in my opinion than anything else, but I think there's a benefit. Um, the, the benefit outweighs the harm. Um, and uh, then you think about death rates, uh, granted, when you look in the hospitalizations, 99% of those, or again, I'm going off of last week's figures, 99% of the hospitalizations in Connecticut are unvaccinated. Small percentage of those vaccinated, and that's good um, in terms of the vaccination. It's telling us, okay, the vaccination has an impact to the, the long-term health of the patient. Um, but uh, to me, we wanna slow the transmission. Kids are going back to school. They're gonna be in the classroom. They're wearing the mask. 
Uh, if we add the mask, it's just another opportunity for us to help to reduce the spread as we go into the colder weather, colder months. Um, and again, my game plan is obviously health and safety primary, but um, as a non-medical professional, my next concern is how do I keep the economy running for as long as we can? Um, and so some people hate me, some people support me for it. It is what it is, guys. I'm hoping we can remove it as well. But, you know, I, like I said, it's not my favorite thing, um, but it's not the end of the world. Um, the uh, other just big things in town, uh, we survived Ida. Um, I don't know if the rest of you at four o'clock in the morning or 354 got an email or emergency um, note coming across your phone saying there was a tornado warning. Um, probably not very appropriate, but I just turned and went back to bed. My wife, on the other hand, was wide awake as a result of it and was trying to encourage all of us to go to the basement. We all survived that as well. Um, and the, but there were other uh, points in town that, due to the heavy rains over the last month and a half, um, have seen some severe flooding and some, uh, we have a number of uh, flood areas, 100 year floodplain areas within town. Um, those places saw flooding in their basement, flooding in their yard that has been extremely frustrating. We're gonna work with the engineering department, um, physical services, and a lot of these are MDC issues, frankly. Um, yeah, but we're gonna to try to work on behalf of the residents to try to get some of those areas addressed. If you're in the 100 year floodplain, it is what it is. There's not gonna be much we can do for you, but in terms of maybe the raw sewage backing up into your basement um, or maybe other ways we can divert the, the water uh, so it's not as much as quickly. Um, we're going to see what we can do, but unfortunately, all things have a price tag to it, and those things that are on personal property are kind of difficult to address, um, but we'll do what we can and, and try to help uh, the residents. And then the other thing that's big news, I mean, there's lots of little things, but if you haven't heard, um, I keep saying it like this, the rumors are true. Um, I did submit my letter of resignation um, as town manager. It was not an easy decision. It's not something I was excited to do. Um, I see so much, uh, the, the town has moved so far forward um, in such a short time. Um, I thank Peter Gillespie and volunteers like yourself for, for making the economic development work here within this town. Um, it's, it's a great town. I've lived here for 20 years. My wife was born and raised. I'll, I have nothing but positive things about this town, this place. These employees that work here are fantastic and amazing. I've worked in other municipalities and by far this is a most talented group of individuals um, I've had the privilege of working next to. Um, a lot has happened in my two and a half years here in a very short compressed period of time. Um, and ultimately I have to do what's best for my family. Um, and myself. And so it's, it was not an easy decision. Um, it just even working with the council on how to, how to best approach this. Um, I, I've enjoyed working with this council. Um, so it's, it's a, it wasn't easy, um, but it's something that I felt that I had to do. Uh, frankly, part of this, as I've been saying to people is some of the drama associated with me will come with me wherever I go. Um, but it won't be directed anymore at the town manager's office, which will allow the town manager's office to move some of these great projects forward without the antagonists um, and some of the other frustration that, uh, that goes along with the position. So it's, it's frustrating. Um, I've, I've enjoyed working here, um, but I also understand how government works and I know what's my opinion, what may be long-term best for the community, certainly best for my family. Gary, thank you for those words. I'm speaking personally just from myself. It's been a pleasure working with you. This is going to be my last EDIC RDA meeting with you. Um, oh, I got uh, scared for a second. I'm like, time out. <laughs> okay, no, with no. me, that's fine. <laughs> no, uh, Peter's, they have pictures of me that, that prevent me from leaving. Um, so I want to say uh, on behalf of myself, again, just personally, it's been a pleasure working with you. Um, and um, I'm, I'm sad to have you go, but wherever you're going is going to be lucky, in my opinion, to have you. Um, we are looking for a part-time economic development person. So if you'd <laughs> like to apply for that position, it is, you know, is a possibility. But thank you for your service. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm sure our paths will continue to cross. Yeah, thank you for that. If, and I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to 
bring it back. I, I just, um, I'm still living in town uh, that people haven't run me out yet. That may be next, but, um, but I'm still here. I'm still willing to help uh, any way that I can. Um, of course, I have to make sure my family's okay with that um, simply because I, they keep saying they're going to be happy to have me back. Um, but uh, I, I think I just need to point out that, um, you know, I, I get paid for what I do. Um, individuals like yourself are here because of a commitment um, over and above the financial benefit, right? You're here because you want to see great things happen. And this commission in particular is one, and maybe it's just because I, I like economic development, but this um, commission is one that I will miss um, because there's so many great ideas that are being pushed around. Um, and I think the volunteers, I mean, there's something like 238 volunteers working maybe 25, 30 commissions. That is amazing for any community to have that many residents interested in participating and moving government forward. Um, so I, I really recognize you guys for everything that you do. Um, like I said, I, I get paid for this misery. You do it because you care. Um, so uh, I do thank you for continuing to come here every month and uh, being willing to volunteer. Thank you, Gary. Okay, Gary, I just want to say as one of the guys that hired you, I'm going to be sorry to see you go because you've been a great asset to the town and we will miss you. Thank you, Counselor. And, and I, I, and I appreciate say, the opportunity. All right, Tom. And I, Gary, I definitely want to say that, you know, you say you get paid for it, but you care too. So, I, yeah, we're volunteering, but you put a lot of time. So I feel the same way as Tony. I just want to let you know, I'll always be here for you. Thank you, Tom. And I, I really want to thank you for putting up with me in the beginning of my position in the chamber and putting up with all my silly questions that I now know are silly. And you never, ever made me feel like I was bothering you. And I am sorry for these times that we're living in right now, but I'm, I'm happy you made a decision that's good for your family. So thank you for all you've done. Amen. Thank you, Deb. And you weren't that bad. I don't know, but. Oh, are you kidding? Well, thank you for it that. It takes a village, right? It takes a village. It takes a village, yes. Thank you. Gary, I know you say you don't, you're not a doctor, but you could pass for a doctor. You've got the white on and those could be de medical degrees in the background. <laughs> there you go. You're ready for surgery. Okay. Oh, anybody, else have, anybody else have anything nice to say about Gary? <laughs> All right, um, Commissioner Oichel, you are on mute, sir. Apologize for that. No worries. Uh, yes, the uh, commission last night approved a canopy area out front of their uh, restaurant. Uh, the commission did, and. Uh, I assume, Peter, they're gonna be going ahead with that as soon as possible. Uh, it's a two-part thing, uh, canopy uh, differently to, on to each side of the front. And uh, let's see, what else here? Uh, we discussed the marijuana issue uh, with Peter. He brought it forth and uh, presented it to the commission to the degree what the state's proposals are in statute and so forth. And the conclusion is that we'll probably go into a moratorium uh, for the commission. But the question is, as Peter said last night, how long? We can't wait too long. It can't be uh, because things are happening in that regard. And I think the commissioners kind of felt that, uh, at least, and I do feel this way, that we need to bring the council into play and even, even this body and, uh, and anyone else, the citizens included. I really wish we could almost have a referendum on it. But again, the, that uh, you got to have a certain percentage of citizens wanting that. But uh, anyway, we discussed that and we'll see what the future, near future holds. But we've got to act on that moratorium pretty quickly. There, it takes some effort to do that, probably a month of time, right, Peter? Yes. And, um, and let's see now, uh, 
I brought up, oh, I want to talk about this too, because it's a personal thing a little bit. It's not personal, it's a, it's a town issue. But that more than old Weathersfield, there are traffic issues elsewhere. And the one I felt strongly about to the point I brought it to the police station and to a couple of police, that the apartment uh, building at the corner of Mill and Maple, uh, they park out on Mill Street. Mill Street is getting as a major connector through the south side is a, is a problem area with that parking. And uh, especially now with the Chase Bank going in on the corner and opening the next few months probably, uh, we're, we're even going to have more congestion on that road. And I've even gotten complaints to me from citizens when I've asked them. They said, oh yeah, that's that's very difficult to use and I use it a lot. And uh, so I think the police have to, because there is enough parking. The tenants in that uh, building can park out back. The commission in the old days, when that was proposed and built, uh, they pro we provided parking. So it's a matter of their convenience. They park out on the uh, the shelf, the snow shelf, as we call it, and other things, and uh, on the street. And the police have to enforce that. So I think the that issue may be sitting with our traffic enforcement officer or parking officer or who's town manager. Maybe it'll be getting to him, but again, it's short there, but whoever the manager is or their, uh, whoever takes his place temporarily or permanently, will have to maybe deal with the, that issue, but I hope it will be taken care of. Uh, I think that's it for, uh, I think George, that's the, uh, it here. If you wanna add something, you certainly can. Uh, George, the, the pre-application for the Berlin Turnpike last night? Oh, yes. Yes, we did. The uh, corner of North Street. It's been a chronic problem in the past. I always felt going way back. I've been on the commission so long. And I remember when there was some thinking about how big you could bring some of those properties together and build something solid there at the exit. Or I, It's an exit from the town, but it's an entrance, too. And uh, But the proposal last night is a leasing operation for cars and um, I it was a proposal with a rendering and it was a preliminary proposal which means that we can look at it and talk about it and uh, we don't approve anything they have to come back with a full proposal I thought the commission participated quite well in suggestions to this applicant but the proposal looked positive compared to a year ago or two or three years ago when I excuse the language, damned every one of these proposals that came in front of us almost there, because I wanted to see a quality thing. But the proposal that came in last night looked pretty good to me, aesthetically, and uh, uh, a lot of green area around it. They're ready, getting rid of some of the pavement and that kind of thing. So uh, they'll be coming in. Peter, you want to comment on when you think they might be coming forth? I don't know. Peter Alter is the attorney for them and uh, he does good work on these things. Peter That's George, I have a question on the on the brewery side, both auction house and Masonic. Have have they made any um uh move towards P and Z yet or anything filed at all? Uh no. both square peg and or boondoggle? No, I, I reached out to the square peg uh people last week just to offer my assistance. It's been quiet. Um and then um, the Boondoggle Brewery, the Masonic Building, I'm still waiting for him to submit his application. He's still working on his plans. Probably we won't hear that until maybe late October at this point now. Okay. So, and I can't speak to the clearinghouse. It could be farther farther out than, than that. Any right. of the people at this meeting, I would, I would as a commissioner like to even hear at this point, how you feel about parking needs there because it's a very limited site on parking. And uh, we, we would have to, they would have to use probably parts of the, the town or the first church parking. So anybody has any comments, I'd like to hear them. I know Peter would. Well, I know the parking, you know, the potential 70 spots um, that are on the table and also uh, first church. And I know at one point Gary was working or uh, with first church 
that to the potential brewery with boondoggle first church obviously would it's right across the street so i don't know where we're at on that or 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 what i know that we're talking about maybe trading some type of town services uh with the with first church um on yeah. resurfacing or plowing or something something that we could do um but um certainly right now i mean the the uh, the gentleman who is the owner of Boondoggle is a very um, imaginative personality. And if some of the things that he is looking to do come to fruition, it could be, if it's a success, would bring significant traffic to that corner. And, you know, we, um, you know, again, it's a great problem to have, but it's certainly one that I think before P and Z, and I have stressed that to we did have a meeting with, uh, is, and I, is it Mika or Micah? I am bad. Mika from Boondoggle Pete? It's, no, it's, it's Micah. It's one Micah. of those two, I don't. Micah. My apologies. Micah. Uh, Micah, Micah, thank you. We did have conversations with Micah and said, look, I know you're doing a lot of things, but you really do need to, you know, parking was something that I was very, I stressed to him significantly that you need to turn rocks over and figure out what your options are there because you could have a beautiful facility, but if you don't hit the parking requirements, um, it doesn't matter. So um, I think it's a, that's my two cents. I, you know, if, if, that pro if that product moves forward, that project, excuse me, moves forward, it's a, it's a significant showstopper if parking has not been put together uh, for, for that operation. It's a non-starter, I think. Marco? Yeah, I mean, one thing I was just going to add is um, I have a really close friend who has a, um, a brewery over in Bristol, and, you know, they're always faced with that same issue. Um, they have a small lot and everything else. One thing I can tell you is, I mean, I don't know about those of you who might frequent breweries the way some of us do, um, but a lot of times, you know, we'll take an Uber, um, and we do that on purpose. And so even in town, I'd be willing to take an Uber from my house down to, you know, um, the new place. Um, and so... I think, you know, that is one of those creative, you know, very different things that a lot of people, you know, five years ago, people weren't doing it, uh, but now everyone is doing it. And especially when they know they're going to a brewery that might have more alcohol, you know, by volume, you know, per beer, um, they do that on purpose, obviously. And I know my wife and I have done it uh, many times. Um, we just don't even take the chance. We just will take an Uber, get there, you know, back and forth safely. So yeah. hopefully that will alleviate some of the traffic because I know, uh, my friend's brewery out in Bristol, they, they deal with that a lot. It's a great point. One of the things that I think that Charles, if I'm, uh, George, maybe you can comment on this. One of the possibilities when they were looking for PNZ approval was um, having valet parking. And there's a church right around the corner, Sacred Heart, which is really underused and their parking lot is never busy. Um, if they could have a um, valet parking that would um, provide that over to the church. They'd have to obviously negotiate with the church, but or DMV, some offsite um, valet parking, in addition to the Ubers, maybe. So uh, I, I'm I'm sure. Go ahead. You know, I, I'm sure you already know know this, but um, when Times Fool put on the Shakespeare production, um, I was helping with that, and we asked First Church if we could put the overload of cars there. I'm sure you guys already know this, but they, they were telling us that fine, but you know, liability is their ma major concern. So if the town can do something with some liability coverage, I think that might help negotiations. Well, I'm sure you already know that, but I wanted to pass it on. My one of my questions will be to Peter and others, besides all of the things that are obviously being talked about parking wise is how much do they really want to do? That's what I'll be looking at when they present this, you know, can they, are they doing too much for the need for parking? And the second thing would be, do we want to, we can and will the town even in, in consider uh, paving out front uh, where there could be some more, uh, parking spaces or on the side even or something. But I, you know, those are the kind of things I would be looking for too, as well as Peter's recommendations on on the uh, parking situation. And I know it's always been been up in the air over time. And uh, how do we work with First Church? 
Thank you. Thank you very much for anybody. And I think knows. all of these businesses have to put on their websites. You know, when somebody looks at the website to uh, make a reservation, they should automatically be directed to where it's good to park. Yeah, uh, agreed. It was, uh, I was wondering if Bryce is doing something internally inside the restaurant to provide little maps or a little note when they people get their menu on, by the way, if you for parking in the future, these are the spots where you can park. I know he's very proactive and he wants to be part of the solution, but educating the people that the diners that do go there um, would be a, a great idea. But maybe this rickshaw thing is something we can talk about. Um, Okay, any other questions uh, or any other statements, Mr. Oikel? Does that conclude your report? No, I'm all set. Thank okay. you. Any other questions for Commissioner Oikel? Great, thank you, Commissioner. Um, Judy, Heritage Tourism? Hey, and I have to log off right after my report. Um, sorry. Um, so, a couple of small things the visitor uh, map and Heritage Way signage. Um, it's almost ready to go up. Um, that has to be installed by November 15th. Um, so hopefully it'll be coming very soon. Um, the cultural uh, designation, a district designation, um, uh, there's uh, work going on on getting that in place. Um, we have to file an application, members to attend, and there's a meeting at or a presentation to the council on September 20th, is that right, Peter? On a cultural district, district designation. One more way to bring Parkers in. Um, there's a lot of other things going on. The photo contest is starting up. So um, if we can get new photos, um, and the preference is not all fall foliage pictures. Um, so if people have them in their cameras, um, I think they have to have been taken during the calendar year. So um, hopefully we'll get new submissions um, for that. And then uh, finally, the uh, uh, scarecrows are coming back in October. Um, okay. Bikes on Main was so successful. I'm sure that scarecrows this year will be over the top. So um, expect to have lots of traffic in town and lots of business for our um, restaurants and all that on Main Street. That's it. Unless Peter has something else. No, I think you cut you covered it great. Good. Judy, can you share the upcoming um, event at the Keeney? Oh, yes. Uh, tomorrow night, there's a reception and all are invited um, at the 9-11 uh, exhibit at the Keeney uh, Cultural Center. And this is a, a, a collaboration with the Historical Society and the Keene Foundation. Uh, and it's titled Weathersfield Remembers. And it's the exhibit itself is uh, fairly well sanitized. So it's not gonna be horribly um, frightening to anybody. There is a video that people can also go in and watch. And that is a little bit more graphic, you know, um, of the events of the day. So I invite everybody to please come. It's 4.30 to 7.30 and there will be refreshments. So come. Thank you, Mark, for reminding me. You, you got it, Judy. Thank you. Goodbye, Thank everybody. You Bye, Judy. All right, no questions for Judy because she's going. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, Deb, Deb Raymond. Um, so I wanted to um, talk about we're having, we're, we think we're having our beer and barbecue, depending on COVID. Um, October 29th, so we, we just uh, confirmed all that. We're gonna have, the, uh, you know, our line dancing food and, uh, you know, we have to wear masks inside the, the barn, but we're gonna do a lot of the activities outside as well. So we'll have uh, Boondoggles is doing our beer, Sammy's gonna be doing our wine. So I'm gonna encourage everybody to attend that. That should be a lot of fun. Hopefully we can do that. Um, we are in discussions with Holiday on Main. Um, we're going to go forward like we're having it and see, you know, how that that turns out with uh, with COVID restrictions. So um, those two things. And I wanted to see if the EDIC would be um, maybe put an extra effort into coming to some of the business after hours we're having to support the local businesses. 
um, at the last one we had, which was down um, at the Cove, funrides.com, Morgan, um, Captain Morgan's place. He had asked that, he had mentioned that, um, would I be passing that stuff on to the EIDC and that the businesses would love to see more participation in that. So having said that, our next one is, uh, I think everybody gets my email blast. If they don't, you know, let me know and I'll put you on it, but I think everybody does. Uh, the next one is uh, September, uh, yeah, September 16th, Subway and Sammy at Byright are putting on a uh, business after hours at 4.30. So, Jeff, do you check the email that you've got for me on that? I'm not using my MW Trahan email anymore. I'm using oh. MT. Uh, at Armor All Dealer Products. Just let me know what email you've got for me. Um, I, I think I'm 0 for 1,000 on attending those because uh, typically I'm, I'm, I'm either away or I'm just wrapped up, but, um, yeah. but I will try to make a, a more... Um, I, thank you. I'll try to make I, my I, first one. <laughs> yeah, the, um, yeah the, you know, businesses are... Some of them are booming. Some of them are not. Right. And um, yeah, that's a special. So I know this has been a long meeting, but um, my wheels have been turning because I had a meeting, a talk with Cindy Jacobs prior to, to coming on here. And we were discussing a lot of things, but one of the things was, um, you know, the Southstein Highway. And I don't know that the chamber alone could do this, but there is, I think there would be some value in organizing, getting together with some of the businesses on the Salestine to see how we could help them or improve or, you know, almost like the shopkeepers have done. And I didn't know if that's something the EDIC would work with us with, or I don't, I don't know. This was just like 20 minutes ago. Well, no, now it's, you know, 1130, we're discussing this. Um, the, the short answer is, I mean, I, I don't think we would be the ones responsible for organizing it, but I think mm -hmm. if, the, if the if the Southstein Highway stakeholders put together, you know, a group that does meet, we certainly would be, you know, and and if we were welcomed, which it sounds like we would be, we would try to. I don't. I'm. I'm I don't want to. I don't like to commit to anything until I get all the T's right. and crossed and I's dotted. But I think if if there was something that was put together and it would would be a value for you know, us to be there or be involved, that's kind of a no brainer. So yeah. um, were you looking for us to organize it or to just participate? No, I was just wondering if I, if I started doing something like that, putting it out there with the, the business owners, I don't, I, I didn't, you know, yeah, I would like them, you need I see to participate. Yeah. You know, but with everything going on, I know it's just another thing to add on other people's plates, but, um, the subject does keep getting brought up. So, you know, maybe it would be a good project for 2022 because we're, we're or heading maybe there. Just, or maybe a forum just to talk about where the, they can come together and talk about things they like and don't like and we, that we can participate in, you know, mm -hmm. maybe like a forum like we did uh, during COVID where we got together and, and discussed the different things and regulations that were coming up from the state and reopening, et cetera. So, yeah. Our ears are open, Deb. Let us know how we can okay. participate. Great. And, 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 and it might be, I mean, based on, um, we didn't get a great response on the survey. You know, I think that's one of the things we wanted to get out of the survey is just to, 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 to survey business owners about how, we're, you know, what they like and don't like here. I don't know if they've, um, you know, we can see who's, who, who responded and those, that would be, you know, for the silent steam businesses anyway, that would be a great starting point to invite people because you know that they are really interested in. But, um, but yeah, if it was, you know, even if it was in person or on Zoom or something, I think that would have a lot of benefit because that's all we really want to know is what, you know, right. is what how they feel about being here and what they like and what they don't like. Yeah. So, Mark, maybe I should step up and help you with the surveys. And you asked for help, so um, I'll be happy to do right. that. Good. Well, we got one. So yeah, and I'll help with that too. I mean, I don't think there are that many, right? Didn't Peter say like 50 or so? So it's like 50, um, 50 yeah. 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 So it's not that many. It'd take a half an hour, an hour, you know. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, agreed. I think I think reading is one thing, but just disseminating and figure out what we can do with it, it will be the bulk of the time. Mm -hmm. So I agree. Um, 
All right. Um, thank you, Devin. You kind of rolled in the Southstein Highway, and I'd like to open this up. Uh, Pete, and I'd like to get this just as an agenda item, uh, public comments, so we have it physically on the agenda. And it could come after reports. Maybe it could be item nine. Um, or I, I, item I added eight. it as, as number three on tonight's today's agenda, oh. but I can, I, I'll move it to the end next time. Um, from a protocol perspective, is it better? I would think from a comment perspective, we'd want to have it more towards the end. So the, the people attending can respond to whatever we've been talking about. Right. If you wouldn't mind, on, what does the group think? Do you should it be more forward or towards the back? Any thoughts? Um, I think, uh, well, I, I guess it depends on if we're going to put any, you know, I, I know there's a, you know, the town council usually puts a time limit on it. And um, I mean, we haven't had an issue, so I don't think it would be an issue. I think for some of the PNZ meetings I've seen, um, folks, there isn't a time limit. Some of the board of ed meetings, there hasn't been a time limit, but that's, that's the only, only problem is, is it might be better off going. It's well, I guess I can go either way because somebody speaking too long in the beginning or the end is still going to make it a long meeting, but I don't really have a, um, I think it might make more sense around this time, but also around this time, everybody wants to get off and a lot of people have left. So it might make sense to have it earlier. Okay. Yeah, the only advantage for having it at the beginning is so uh, that people are looking at the agenda, uh, they can see what's there and make their comments about what's on the agenda. And it could, if there was something we were going to vote on, it would give us their input before we voted. If you have it at the end, we've already voted on something. So their input would be mute at that point. So having it at the beginning is really better than at the end. Okay. Uh, then why don't we do that? Um, well, Pete, where well, you've got it, then we'll keep it perfect. Um, the group has spoken. Um, with that being said, do we have any public comment? Cindy Jacobs? Yeah, just a few and I'll keep it short. Um, yeah, um, first of all, I wanna mention over the uh, um, Labor Day, I ran into Michael Care or Micah Care. Uh, at the Masonic Temple, and he was working with his friends or contractors, and and talked talked with them a bit, and it was just kind of great to see his enthusiasm and uh, energy that he's putting into this uh, repair and renovation. So I just want to um, mention that uh, one is the kind of uh, good problems in Old Weathersfield Department, and that is uh, my husband uh, tried a couple of times to get an ice cream cone, but the line was so long, it was turned, it was just figured it was like a half an hour wait. So it's really a popular spot. And um, I don't know, maybe there's room for another uh, ice cream place. Um, there was a mention of the uh, street lights, and I'll say I was on the uh, crossing the Silestine Highway at um, uh, Wells Road and um, looked like they were replacing the street light. So just what I saw. And um, I don't know uh, if you want to check that with the um, uh, physical uh, physical services. Um, Gary Gary is not here, but oh, you're there. Uh, so I just want to add to my um, you know uh, express my appreciation for your your work and your contributions to our town, and you know, I wish you well and and your next uh, venture. Um, finally. Um, I want to say that I, I dine outdoors at Vito's. I had an a email um, exchange with Peter. Um, they have a couple of tables on a very narrow sidewalk. And so what happens is the cars come up very close. Um, I don't... I don't know that I've... Uh, I mean, what could happen and what I had suggested to Peter is uh, you could remove about two, it's on a corner, an inside corner where Vito's is located. And you could remove two parking spaces and you could really have, and then of course put barriers. You could really have a nice outdoor dining. I don't know if that's what they aspire to. Um, I don't, I don't uh, know, I am assuming someone else owns the shopping center. So I don't know how to start a conversation with them, but I would wonder if they wouldn't kind of come forward with it because they don't own it. Uh, still, I think it's a it's an opportunity for a nice outdoor dining experience and more business for them. Um, does anybody have any ideas on how to approach that or whether it should? I just think it's it's a good opportunity. We we had talked with them last year about putting a uh, outdoor seating area in the parking lot and protecting it from traffic, and 
they never um, pulled the trigger on that. So it's really up so to it's them. kind of up to them. But I mean, I'm wondering if if you had the idea of removing a couple of parking spots, then they really yes, have. Room. So in was, fact, they did. It was oh, that you, was that was the plan. They were going to remove parking spaces in the parking lot and use that as an outdoor patio and they didn't go forward with it so i'm not sure yeah there's obviously costs associated with it. maybe they thought it wasn't cost effective but yeah okay and then there was no pushback from the owner of the shopping center uh i don't know what that relationship was but um they were going to pursue that so i assume they had permission ahead of time so so maybe just um, as a diner, maybe a friendly suggestion wouldn't be out of out of hand. Yeah, if you talk to the Mufuchis, uh, any of the uh, the gals behind uh, there, the two sisters are 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 very yeah. aggressive business people, and just say, hey, you know, does does your landlord allow you to put more um, outdoor dining? And I think the ball certainly is in their court. But yeah, as a diner, I think you would say, you know, if you build it, they might come. People might be more apt to eat at Vito's if they could eat outside. Because you're right, they have two small, two. I think you can barely get four people outside in those two tables. Because um, uh, they, I don't even know how you get a pizza on that table. They're very small. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and the cars are coming right at you. It's a little right. bit like, okay, I hope they, uh, hope they see the, the, the end of the sidewalk there. So yeah, I, would uh, talk, I would talk to the owner, Cindy. Okay, thanks for your uh, advice on that. And um, and that's all. Thank you. Great, thank you, Cindy. Um, Okay, so that concludes uh, marketing communications. Anything on that, Pete? Uh, we, I need to remind you, we need to set a meeting up, Mark, to yep. talk about the business survey and other odds and ends. Yes, um, uh, we will get that. Our next meeting is uh, Thursday, October 14th. Uh, any correspondence, Pete, that we need to worry about? Sorry, Mark. <sighs> okay, again, rejected. Um, so we have a handful of meeting uh, things. Um, one is, uh, I'm thinking the one is the outreach uh, meeting. Um, I am, uh, next week is not a good week for me. I have one commitment with you, Pete, either Thursday or Friday next week, but I'm traveling through Wednesday. Um, so I'd like to be involved with that. The, the following week uh, would work um, for me if that would work for um, you as well. Um, so the week of the 13th is not good, um, but the week of the 20th, um, if we'd like to schedule a, the outreach meeting where we're going to be reviewing the surveys and developing a strategy around what we find um, the week of the 20th, um, the, tw the, the 20th is not a good date for me. Everything else that week is I'm pretty good. So 21st, 22nd, 23rd or 24th, I'm good. Are you, are you thinking like a morning morning? Yeah, meeting? I would say an early morning meeting. We can make uh, it they, as we can make it a Zoom meeting or do you want to do in person? I, I, um, I think in light of people's uh, positions, I would just probably stick with Zoom at this point um, okay. and maybe do an early, you know, an 8.30 call if we could. Um, I'm up earlier than that. I don't want to get too early, but at least 8, 8.30 might work one of those mornings. Okay. Do you want to pick a day? Okay, let me just uh, pull up my uh, calendar. Cannot do the 23rd. Ugh. That's the only the day. Is out for you, Deb? The 23rd is out for me. It's the only day that week that's out. Okay, Mr. Carson, are you available um, Tuesday through Friday other than the 23rd? Uh, yeah, I can I can be. Friday, that Friday is wide open for me, um, but any day might work. I, okay. I can do I can do Thursday or Friday morning. So Thursday is not good for Deb. Well, okay. if you have it early in the morning, how long do you think it will it will last about? How are we going to get the? Uh, are you going to send us an electronic um, thing, Pete, on the on the responses from people? I can maybe um, bring up the survey results if I do a, a Zoom share screen kind of thing. So we'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. think I'd like to physically read them before the meeting. Oh, if I okay. Um, maybe I can um, just scan them ahead of time and send them out email. Yeah, I think as a group, rather than us reading them during the meeting, if we could read them beforehand and then respond, I think would probably be better. But I can so, also pull up the I can pull up the survey monkey tabulation of the ones that were submitted electronically. So at least you can see those as well. Yeah, perfect. So the Friday the 24th, 830. Does that work? Yep. Yeah, or 
I can do the morning on Thursday, not to complicate matters, but as long as it's I, early in the morning. I'd rather do Thursday if we could stay away from Friday. Does yep. Thursday work for you, Pete? That's fine. Yeah. Twenty third at eight thirty. Yeah. Okay. With twenty third at eight thirty. Yeah, I'll send okay. a, I'll send an uh, invite to everybody. And I'd like to be a part of that as well. Thank yep. you. Okay. Outreach. And we're saying eight thirty, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay, um, I got that. We had that meeting. Um, I think we want to talk about the, um, I, we can do it offline with Gary, but you and I need to get a schedule together for the recovery meeting uh, using the, R, the ARAP funds. Um, um, and if we can, I'm gonna, I, if we can maybe tie that in maybe with the uh, end of, uh, uh, I'll talk to you later about that. Um, also our salute to business meeting. Um, do you want to try to do it that same? We probably should try to sneak it in earlier than that if we can. Um, stand well, by. Mark, why don't we go with uh, Deb's supposed to talk to uh, the person from the restaurant tomorrow. Let's just wing it after that. Let's get it done. Okay. Instead of waiting another week, we really need to, to no, Deb, that's, talk to her, see what her prices are and see if it's a doable thing. That's, I forgot about your right time. I, that completely flipped my, passed my mind. We could just do an uh, email, that. an email okay. string back and forth. All right. So Deb, you're going to be kind of just the um, um, the the tip of the spear in this at the beginning. Just let us know on that what that um, link is to your Zoom meeting, whatever, and we can we can get involved with that. Um, sure. Pete, the the and rickshaw concept kind of you know as crazy as I thought it was seems to have a little bit of um, traction with the group. Um, so. Um, and Deb, that's certainly something that we'd want to pull you in on um, the whole idea of having maybe the, that electric rickshaw, you know, a, a tour that can go maybe up to heirloom down to Charles type of a thing, or maybe a designated thing. But if you want to maybe table that, um, we can put that up for discussion. Um, maybe that might be a way of, of uh, including others to help. Um, and it might be kind of fun. I mean, people might just like to get on and ride it. Um, so. Maybe we can get the ARP money to through that to pay for it. Um, I wasn't going to suggest that because again, I, I if we can, great. Because I don't know what we can use it yet for. But right. um, if that's a way that to help stimulate, um, then you know, from your lips to God's ears, Peter. Um, so we can talk about that, I guess. Um, okay. So Deb, if you want to see if anybody in the group or and. Um, Pete, you said you know somebody owns one. I mean, uh, is it electric one or is it a pedal? It's a pedal electric. one, but but you know they're involved in the bike, you know, industry. So I'm sure they can, if they're if they're out there, they'll put put their task to it and, and track it down. So I, I'll okay. start with that too. So Great. what what do you want me to do on that? Sorry. Um, I would talk, I mean, we need to find out from, I mean, if the, it's a funding issue, you know, who pays for it, um, you know, and is, is the, um, the group there, which is a very dynamic group now, the Shopkeepers Association, is this something that could be pre presented to the Shopkeepers Association? You know, is this something that the town can participate potentially in, the shopkeepers uh, can participate in? You know, is, can we is, do you sell advertising on these things to help you know, offset expense, you know, what would the fee be to the, to the person riding it, you know, two bucks to get on, you know, type of thing. I, who knows? I mean, just talking out loud, but mm -hmm. maybe just start there. Um, yeah, uh, the shopkeepers and, um, and see if that works. Um, okay. And so uh, Pete, the Rocky Hill meeting is something we can talk about down the road. That certainly isn't a, a major thing. So we've got the salute meeting um, is going to come up as a result of Deb's meeting. The recovery meeting, you and I are going to get together with Gary and get the date on that. Um, and uh, we have our outreach meeting scheduled. Um, great. I've got nothing else. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn? No move. Uh, second. Uh, that's Mr. Penelo. Mr. Martino, would you like to take the second? Second. All right. Thank you, Councilor Martino. Uh, all those in favor, turn off your computer and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks, I'm going to hop in my car. I'll be over there shortly. Okay. Yep. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye.